All right. So today in Soundbout Wednesday, um, we're going to go over earning codes. This will be a quick session, 15 minutes or less, just reviewing how to use your earning codes when reporting to SIRS. So we're going to go ahead and get started. On our main website, uh, we're going to start on the main website at www.ohsers.org, and you're going to click Employers. Just a quick reminder, we do have training opportunities out on our main website. So weird, I can't see the screen, green screen and tell me what I'm showing. Um, training opportunities, if you go down, we do have some employer one-on-one -on -one workshops available for this upcoming summer. And then we have some available sound bites coming up next week also. Um, if you're on the main website, if you click the employer tab, we're gonna go down to the bottom to forms and publications. And today I am actually gonna be reviewing a how-to um, on um, earning codes for contribution reporting. So everyone in your email from SIRS should have received um, in your email reminder, if you look under resources, there is a link for how to earnings code for reporting for contribution reporting. If you open that, it should bring up this document and that's what we're reviewing today. So I'm going to go ahead and go into ESERS. All right, so um, we're going to be working in a file that I uploaded. So there's two different ways. When you sign into ESERS and you upload a file, if you accidentally hit the home button, it will take you to the home page and under five most recent employer reporting files, you will see I have a file in review. Another way to get to your file that is in review is going to the left hand side and clicking contribution file correction and manual contribution entry. Up top under unposted employer reporting header, you will see I have a file that's under review. So I'm going to go ahead and click the link. For purposes of training, I did make a, all my employees um, out as errors so we can work through them so you can understand how your file is. Typically, if you are, um, if you just have regular employees, everyone should be under a 01 for regular um, contribution code. And so you would not see all these errors. You probably will have a whole lot of people that's actually valid instead of review. So today I'm going to take the long way. <laughs> And I'm going to use the social lookup. So if you have a big file, if you're looking for someone, um, instead of going through pages and pages of employees or going clicking on review and paging over, you can actually look someone up by their social. You can keep their earning codes type all. And then for their record status, I'm going to change it from review um, to all. So my system knows to search for this social through all the records, then hit filter. All right, so now everyone should see Bugs Bunny has two records. So there's a couple things that you can do in your open review file. So today I want to review like, hey, my member Bugs Bunny actually has two records on this contribution file. He has a regular earnings code, and then he also has a adjustment record, which you can do on an open file. So right now we're gonna work on my regular contribution record. So when you use a 01 regular code is for regular employees that re, uh, works frequently and pretty much is on every payroll. So my person should be coming over as a 01. He has days and hours. He has the correct pay dates. Um, just remember right now we're in the training environment. So my dates are way behind than what they really are in real time. So right now I am working in the July report. So my dates are right. I have my service days, I have my hours, I have my pre-tax, because he's a pre-tax, but I'm missing my earnings. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my earnings now. Um, typically, if your uh, report is correct, this uh, would not have this type of error, but for training purposes, I just wanna show you what your regular contribution record should look like. I did correct this record, he is now valid. So I'm gonna go up top and go back to my employer reporting header link to take me to the front of my file. Now, what I'm gonna do is review the O2 code. So um, we have an O2 code is for supplemental employees. Uh, so when I say supplemental employees, the supplemental earning code will, will allow a report with supplemental employees, for example, a coach or someone who's working in a supplemental position. On a regular, regular report, only if they are being paid on the same pay dates as the regular employees. In this case, 
Mickey Mouse is my actual supplemental employee. So I'm gonna click on his contribution record ID. I'm gonna open his record. And right now my payroll software sent him under as a regular employee, which I know, hey, he is not a regular employee. He is my supplemental employee because he's a coach. We're paying him out at the end of the season. So in order to report more than um, what bi-weekly payroll contribution cycle code will allow you, the 14 days, I'm gonna report all 80 days for him and all his hours. So I'm gonna change my earnings code to 0 02 because he is a supplemental employee. So my system will understand that. So it should accept up to 92 days at least. If you report more than 92 days, let's say he actually had 96, my system will give you a warning message asking, hey, are you sure the service day should be greater than 92? If this is correct, yes, he should be reported as 96. You can go on the right hand side above his last name and hit, hit suppress warning, then hit save. Now my record is valid again. So he is all set. He has his reported, he's reporting his days and hours that he worked for that um, coaching position. So now I'm gonna go back to up top to employer reporting header maintenance. Now what I'm gonna do is go on to the next one. Another con um, contribute, uh, another earnings code <laughs> you will find is 03 for retro pay. Yeah. All right, Robinhood is actually my retro pay guy. So when you talk about retro pay for service purposes, I want everyone to understand, um, you use the 03 code when there is an increase to a rate of pay for someone. So you guys just pass a contract and you said, hey, these group of members, employees, um, let's say your cafeteria workers, you pass a contract like, hey, they actually gonna get a dollar increase. So now I have to go back and fix prior pay periods because they are short paid. So in this case, I'm actually, oops, that's the wrong person. That's not my grievance, sorry. I can't remember which one was gonna be my retro pay, but we can change them to retro pay right now. Um, if it's a true retro pay, this person, um, I need to correct his account to add his dollar increase going all the way back to April. And all the way up to June 30. As long as these dates match my payroll schedule, the system will accept it. But we're in a training environment, my system will go back that far. So it is possible to change this. You can report someone for a retro pay if it's a true retro pay. The thing I want to make it sure everyone realize is um, SERS does not um, consider a retro pay being, hey, I miss reporting someone's pay last pay and now I have to pay them back. That's not considered a retro pay. If you actually miss payroll for someone for the prior pay period, we would consider that as a miss pay and there's a different code for that. So just to let you know, make sure you understand the difference between a retro pay versus a miss pay. And we'll go over miss pay one more time. Now we're gonna move on to a stretch pay code, which is the 04 code. And Peter Pan is actually going to be our stretch pay guy. So when you have a stretch pay, I just want to keep make sure everyone remember stretch pay code is for wages that are paid to a member for non working period. So a lot of times for stretch pay, you'll see this um, being done over the summer for individuals who work nine months out of 12. So you have someone who's like, hey, I'm done working for a summer. My last day is going to be May 31st, but I want you to stretch out my rest of my contract from June to August. So that will be a stretch pay because you're paying earnings that they already work and you just need to report it to SERS. So this will actually be a 04. When you use a 04 for stretch pay, this person does not have any days or hours. So I have removed that. And we're just straight up sending over earnings for that current payroll for that person. So I'm gonna go up top and hit save. My record is now valid. So now I'm going to go back up top to my employer reporting header maintenance link, and I'm going to go down to work on another member. Now, we are going to the earnings code for grievance pay. So I just want to make sure everyone understands if you are on a report and it comes up as grievance pay, please stop and contact SERS. Um, 
So typically with um, settlement agreements or grieve, um, grievance payments, they have to have a determination completed for them. So this earnings for Robinhood cannot come over until I get a determination from SERS. So what we're gonna do is actually remove Robinhood because you say, hey, this is a grievance pay. I do not have a determination from SERS. So I have to hold this money until SERS has determined, yes, it's earnable salary or, or no, it's not earnable salary, it cannot come over. Now, I know sometimes people get a little nervous about removing someone for that pay off your um, contribution report, but no worries. If it's supposed to be here, the individual who made the determination will walk you through adding it back in ESERS to the right pay period for that person. But in this case, I do not have a determination for my grievance, um, my grievance settlement or my settlement agreement, so I actually have to remove Robinhood. So I'm gonna go back to my, the front of my file by clicking employer reporting header maintenance. I'm gonna go down to Robinhood. I'm gonna check mark his line. And I'm gonna stay under contribution information panel and hit void record. When you're working in ESERS, please be very careful. There is two void buttons. There's one to void the whole file because woo, this is the wrong information, wrong payroll. I do not want this in ESERS at all so you can void the complete file. Or in this case, I just need to remove Robinhood because I need a determination for my grievance, uh, my settlement agreement. So I'm actually going to void him off. He's going to go off my file. So if you look on the right hand side under status counts, you have one void record, which is true because I don't have a settlement determined. I mean, I don't have a determination completed for that settlement agreement. Now. We are going to work on a couple of things I think is kind of cool. So now we're going to get into the adjustment um, codes. So when you think of um, when it's time for you to do adjustments, these are going to be your 50 codes. So if you have the document open, if you go down to 51, 52, 53, 54, when you do adjustments, are, adjustments are used to add or remove information from a contribution record previously submitted to SERS. So adjustments are reported using either a file upload or a manual entry. So in this case, this my payroll system said, hey, you have an uh, adjustment to do for this particular person. So we're actually going to work on him. In this case, I am going to click on Bugs Bunny. Originally, Bugs Bunny did have two contribution records. So we're going to cheat again. I don't know if I can copy paste here, but we're going to try it. I just want to show you guys something. So in this case, Bugs Bunny does have two records on my file. At the beginning of our training, we talked about um, Bugs Bunny had a regular contribution because I'm working in this current pay period. He actually does have earnings to report on this current file. But last pay, I messed up his payroll. So I have an adjustment record for Bugs Bunny. So I'm actually going to click on his contribution record ID. And my system say, hey, he has a doc one day in eight hours. I need to remove $100 from his account and the earnings are going to be $1,000. When you're working with adjustments, you can't have a negative and a positive. So right now, the system is telling me service days and hours and contributions must be either positive or negative, which is true because I have positive money here for contributions, but I have a negative amount for earnings. So in order to fix this, because I have to dock, dock him a day, is $100. I'm going to delete that out and make sure I have a negative 100. So for this adjustment, since I'm taking away, everything on my page should be negative. So negative one day, negative eight hours, negative $100 of contributions, and a negative 1,000 because that's what the 10% is of $100. So I'm gonna go up top and hit save. So this, um, I have a pending member action, um, account action transaction exists for this adjustment. This is true because I did report another report for him and I didn't pay yet. So I'm just gonna suppress this warning go up top and hit save. My record is now valid. So I have my adjustment here. With an adjustment in your current file, since this is negative, it's actually gonna short my contribution amount, my member portion by $100. So it will reflect that this will reduce by $100 just to let you know. Now, so earning codes, like I say, would either take away or add something to a previous record. So that's what 51 adjustments is. Today we did a negative adjustment to take something away. If, um, so there's matching codes to match with a contribution record you previously reported. In this case, since I was correcting a regular earnings code, I use a 51 because 51 is for regular contributions. 
if you were making an adjustment to a supplemental contribution record that you posted in the past, you could use a 52. Um, there is a 53 for a retro pay if you're fixing a retro pay payment that you previously um, pushed or 55 for grievance. Now we're going to move to a 91. So Donald Duck here is our last two. Donald Duck actually has a regular contribution here. Like I said, I cheated. I mean, everyone error out. <laughs> so um, when Donald Duck came over, he is missing his service days and hours. With your file and review, I just want to make sure everyone knows when your files in review, you can edit anyone on there. So in this case, my system pushed over Donald Duck without service days. So we're actually going to just type in the box 10 days, 80 hours. If I had the wrong contribution amount in the box, you can type over it and you can put in $400 if that's the case. And the match amount for $400 is $4,000. And you can go up top and hit save. So my record is valid. Donald Duck is getting his service days that he um, worked in the hours and he has the correct contribution amount. So I'm gonna go back up top. But the thing is with Donald Duck, I made a goof last pay. I totally forgot to pay him. So now we're gonna just briefly review over the 90s codes. So when you, um, 90 codes are used to report any wages that was not report for a prior pay period. So like I said, I forgot to add Donald Duck to my last payroll because he gave me a late time sheet. So on my current file, I'm gonna go ahead and add in his missed earnings with the correct pay period, begin and end date that they, need, they actually belong to. I'm actually gonna use a 91's earning code so um, ESERs know, hey, I missed a payment. I'm gonna go ahead and add in his missed service days, which is 10. And he actually had 45 hours. His contributions are right, his earnings is right. We're gonna go ahead and hit save. And voila, our record is valid. So I'm gonna go up top, back to employer reporting header maintenance. If you look below, my contribution report have, no longer has anyone hanging out there. You will see that my validations down bottom will kind of keep some of the um, error messages that you had, any warnings you had or any errors there on that report, that's fine. But I was just saying, hey, there's a couple, couple things that you ran into. But up top, I have the submit for posting. Before I hit submit for posting, I'm gonna go and check out my um, member portion, my 10% on my file, just to make sure it matches what my payroll software said it should. So at this time, I have um, $1,780. That's correct because I had my doc day on there, so reduce my amount, so my file's okay, it looks good. So I can actually go up to hit submit for posting. All right, guys, um, sorry, I'm a little bit over there. I try to keep it 15 minutes, but you know, it is a lot of for 30 minutes. Um, that is earnings codes in a nutshell, how to do a couple different things in ESERS with your earnings codes. Um, Katie, did we have any questions today in the chat or anything I need to review? No, the only question that we had was um, in regards to the retro play pays and um, about days and hours. Um, and days and hours aren't required. You can submit days and hours with the retro pay, but they aren't required um, because the idea behind a retro pay is that it's simply a retroactive pay increase. So you should have already reported contributions, days and hours for that individual. So a retroactive pay increase is just paying the difference from that pay increase from that time period. So days and hours do not have to be um, reported for a retro pay. All right, cool. It's the only question we got. And for <laughs> those of you that had um, issues with your Zoom links, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, but we got it all figured out. All right, guys. Well, like I said, these are supposed to be quick sessions. That is it. If you have any more questions, you know more, feel free to send us an email to employer services at ohsers.org. And you guys actually have your 10 minutes left of your time. So thank you for joining us and see you next week.